Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the game Flappy Birds in uh, using Swift. I have a tutorial showing you how to do it with Objective C. Um, that seemed to be very popular. So I wanted to replicate that in one using Swift as the programming language. So I have an existing project here that I'm just kind of going to go over with you so to um, save some time. Um, I have two storyboards. Really, I could have just done this in one. Um, I was using this for something else, so I, uh, I just kept it as is. But really, this button here um, is just connected via, you know, holding down the control key, dragging over here, and I made a, uh, a seg. I'm not going to do that again. Um, a modal seg that brings you to the second screen that happened where the, all the gameplay takes place. Um, and on this screen, I just have a, an image of a bird, um, a back to home, which again is just a button with a seg taking it back here, um, a score label, um, start game label, and a uh, button actually, an IB action that um, sets the game into motion. And then we have our two tubes here that are just two images um, that I placed. So these are UI image views that are on the screen here. And as is this, okay? And just so you can see here, I have, uh, I'm sorry, in here I have you know, a background image that gets dynamically um, created when, and I'll show you that in the code. And then I have this bird and the bird facing um, down. So when it's falling, it faces down. Um, and then a, a tube, which I use that tube, I kind of resize it and place it twice on the screen for the top tube and the bottom tube. Right, and I just named them tube one and tube two. Um, let me show you this in motion, then I'll go over the code. Okay, and this is far from perfect. It's kind of your home screen, and then you uh, click here, and when you're ready to start, click here, and there's a hole in between that you have to get through. And if you do, you'll notice that the score increments. I'm up to four. Uh, I have to dive down to make it here. If I hit the bottom tube or the top two, the game stops, right? Um, I don't have a high score feature in this, but that's easy enough to do. Um, and I'll actually have a link to my tutorial on using NS user defaults just for that purpose. Um, but I want to save time here. So I'm just going to show you the nitty gritty stuff that you need to do to get something that works like this. And you start again and um, game begins again until you hit into a tube. Right. All right. So let me show you what's going on here. Let's go ahead into the um, home view controller first. Uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot going on in here. The, the only thing I really want to show you is that you noticed on that home screen, I had a big image of the bird. It's kind of distorted. Um, I, I actually just did this. So to, I know people are interested in having code like this, knowing how to do that type of thing. Um, so I did that right here in the uh, this called get screen with. Um, function that gets called in the view did load and it's this section right here where I actually create a UI image and I add the bird image to that and then um, I create a UI image view right this is dynamically creating it not using the storyboard at all um, and then uh, here's where I um, make it the size of it right and I could, I leave this line in here uncommented out because I could use, make it exactly the size of the image, but I blew it up a little bit because the image is pretty small. Um, but this is how you could get the size of the image and use that for the width and height, right? And then I center it on the um, screen using this line, and then I add it to the screen using this line. All right, so this really has nothing to do with the gameplay per se, but I just want you to see that. So let's get into the gameplay here. So in our gameplay.swift file, um, we have some variables at the top here that are, uh, let me, I'll go over them. So num and num2, one num is used to move the bird, it's used to increment it. I start them out as equal to two, both of them. And um, num2 is is the used to move the uh, tubes on the x-axis because the y-axis stays still until they go off the screen and then it's randomly, then it's then it's randomly created each time. Um, this counter variable is for when you click the screen to uh, move the bird up a little bit. 
there's like a little delay and that counter is what creates the delay. Once that counter gets to 10, then the bird starts to fall down again. And that all happens very quickly. Um, I have a score variable. I have a screen width and screen height variable that I'll use to place things on the screen and uh, size things appropriately. Um, I have a couple NS timers. Actually, I don't think I'm using this NS timer, so we can probably delete this. Um, and by the way, I will post all this code. I'm gonna actually zip the whole project so you can have the whole project, okay? Um, and then we have some outlets. I showed you on the storyboard, there's a start button, a score label, um, an outlet for each tube, uh, the bird, and then the back button that takes you back to the home screen, right? Um, not that there's really a need for having that, but I just created it. And then I have my IB action for the start button. And that, uh, well, actually, let me, I'm going to get to that in one second. Let's take a look in the view did load, which is the first thing that happens when you come onto the, the screen. Um, I call this place stuff on the screen method, which this, um, first I use these, um, the variables here to get the screen size and width and um, set them to the appropriate class variables. And then I use that to um, create a uh, UI image view. And this is gonna be, I set it to that background image and I make it the size of the screen so that the backup image takes up the whole screen, right? And then we just add that to the screen. Does that make sense? Um, so that's really what's going on here. Um, the key thing, though, is setting these variables because I use, that, use them elsewhere in the code. So that's the first thing that happens. And then you would click on this button here. And so that would uh, call this start timer function, which I'll show you in one section. And then we actually, in one second, and then we actually hide the back to home button and the um, start button because uh, you don't want them on the screen during the gameplay. And so anyway, let's go take a look at the um, start timer. So the start timer, um, the first thing that gets called is this set tubes function. And in there, um, we actually set the uh, uh, where the tubes are going to appear on the screen. Um, I have, like I said, we already have this screen height variable. I divide it by two and then um, convert the integer, convert it to an integer and use that integer to get a random number. Um, we use the random number to place the tubes on the screen. Um, and I noticed when I was running the simulation, this probably needs to be tweaked just a little bit because uh, sometimes the top tube can go off the screen. Uh, and that should be easy enough by just uh, kind of messing with these numbers. You actually could divide this by, you know, three maybe or 2.5 so that, you know, it stays on the screen because I think uh, we're getting too big of a number here for this variable. Um, but anyway, you, I can let you tweak that. I'm just kind of giving you the basics here. Um, and then we update the score. So we update the score because this method gets called every time that the tubes go off the screen. So we want to make sure we update the score every time that they go off the screen because that means you successfully pass through the tubes, right? Um, so anyway, let's look at the next thing that happens here is we, we create our NS timer. Um, this uh, NS timer is going to call this update method every 0.2 seconds, 0.02 seconds, right? So that's what happens here and repeats are true. So this is gonna keep getting called until the game is over, this method down here. And what happens here is we show the score to the screen. We update our counter variable that is going to be used, um, it comes in to play when we tap the screen. Um, and then that's when this section right here comes into play. I'll come back to that in a second though. So uh, let's go down right below though. So uh, inside this update method, uh, the two main things that are happening is we keep setting, uh, resetting the bird one dot center, which is our bird image, um, the center of it on the screen. We we basically keep the x axis the same, but the um, the y axis is going to move up and down depending on whether we're tapping the screen or not. Um, and then the same, the opposite really for the tubes, they are going to be moving on the x axis um, according to that num two variable which I pointed out above, right? And then once the tubes are off the screen, um, they're in negative territory, that's why I use negative 40 to make sure they're totally off the screen. Then we um, set the tubes, we call that set tubes method to put them back on the other side of the screen. And finally, we do some uh, checks here to see where the bird is. If the bird has touched the top tube, game's over. If it's touched the bottom tube, same thing. 
Um, and actually, uh, when I was doing this with a, a class of mine, they recommend that we actually put that in here. I was being friendly for our um, person playing the game and not making game over if you hit the bottom or the top of the screen. But I'll leave that up to you. You could call game over in each of these as well. Um, and then, so let's see. So if we scroll down a little more, here's what I was talking about. This um, touches began is a real powerful method that detects any time that the screen is tapped. And when the screen is tapped, um, we set the num variable that was, remember, that was equal to two at the top. And a positive variable is going to send the bird down the screen because zero is at the top of the screen and um, whatever the size of the screen is down at the bottom. And so if it's um, adding two to the x to the y axis, it's going to fall down the screen. So if we make it a negative number, then it's going to go up the screen. And so I reset our counter variable. And so remember what I showed you up here is that the, oh, I passed it, right here is then this is getting called every 0.02 seconds. And so this is quickly going to be equal to 10. So basically it's about a second that this, we have the screen going up the, the, we have the bird going up the screen. And then once um, it's divisible by 10 evenly, which means it's equal to 10, and then um, we are going to set num equal to two and the bird starts to fall again. Does that make sense? Um, so this, and then we also switch the image of the bird so that um, there's some, looks like some movement. The bird's like pointing a different direction when it's going up the screen as opposed to when it's falling down. Um, and that's right here where we do that, where we change the image of the bird. And so the, you can tweak these numbers, really this one, to how great of an effect you want it to have when you tap the screen. Um, I found it negative eight. It looks pretty good. Uh, it looks the game's uh, challenging with that variable, um, but you can change that to your liking. And then the game over function it gets called. The the key thing here is it says timer invalidate. That stops the NS timer, and so there's no motion in the game because the update method doesn't get called anymore. Um, we show the uh, start button again, and uh, then we reset the score back to zero. Okay. Now, if you were using NS user defaults and you want to save a high score, this would be a place where you would examine that to see whether we had a high score or not. Um, and this is the update score method that gets called and basically just adds one to the score. All right, so that's it. That's all the code um, needed for a basic Flappy Birds game. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I think this is pretty straightforward, though. And like I said, I'm going to share all this code with you. Um, thanks and subscribe.